Bordetella bertussis is a type of bacteria that causes bertussis, which is a contagious respiratory disease that is commonly known to many as whooping cough. This bacterium is relatively small and gram-negative. Gram-negative means that its cell wall has a thin peptidoglycan layer. It is an ovoid cocobacillus. These can either be arranged singly or in small groups. It does have a capsule, however it does not produce spores. They are non-motile, so they do not possess flagella or other motor devices in order to propel themselves. Bordetella pertussis is a strict obligate aerobe, so it cannot survive without oxygen. Bordetella pertussis was first isolated in Paris in 1900 by Jules Bordet and Octave Gengou. They identified it as the cause of whooping cough by isolating it in a specimen obtained from an infant. This bacterium was very difficult to isolate, and it took six years for them to complete it because the time frame in which the microbe can be isolated is very short. They were only successful after the development of bordet gingu agar, which is now widely used. It contains blood, potato extract, glycerol, and an antibiotic, which can vary. Bordetella bertussis is a pathogen that is specific to humans, and it is unable to survive outside of a host. This is what essentially forces it to transmit from one host to another very effectively in order to survive. The transmission of pertussis is through airborne droplets, most commonly by coughing and sneezing. The disease which this microbe causes, pertussis, is primarily toxin-mediated. The Bordetella pertussis bacteria attach to the cilia of the human respiratory tracts, specifically the epithelial cells. Then, they produce toxins which paralyze the cilia, which are hair-like vibrating structures that move liquids and particles through the respiratory tract. They also cause inflammation of the respiratory tract, causing interference of pulmonary secretions. But what are these virulence factors that cause Bordetella pertussis to be able to invade tissue and cause damage to our cells? An important one is simply called pertussis toxin, which is a secreted protein exotoxin which is only produced by Bordetella pertussis. Pertussis toxin, or PT for short, plays a very important position in promoting infection. However, the role that it plays is not yet entirely understood. It is known to cause most of the integral symptoms that are associated with pertussis. PT has been thought to inhibit airway macrophages, neutrophil recruitment to the airways, and reduce cytokine response. Another virulence factor is called filamentous hemagglutinin. It is a large cell surface protein that functions as an adhesion for Bordetella pertussis. It allows for adherence to the respiratory tract of the host, specifically to the ciliated epithelial cells. Pertactin is an outer membrane protein that also promotes adhesion. It has been found to have a role in inhibition of neutrophils. Fimbriae are surface structures which also function for adhesion. Fimbriae are bristle-like and are present in various numbers. There are many present in the female reproductive system. There is definitely a common theme of adhesion in the function of these virulence factors because these bacteria really want to stick to the host's respiratory tract. Adenylate cyclase toxin increases CAMP levels. This eventually results in the inhibition of phagocytes and can even cause apoptosis of cells. Tracheal cytotoxin kills epithelial cells, but not much is known about how it accomplishes this or any of its other functions. Lipooligosaccharides are glycolipids that play an important role in the function of the outer membrane of gram-negative cell envelopes of Bordetella pertussis. Dermonecrotic toxin is a protein that acts by causing inflammation and necrosis, which is the death of most or all of the cells in an organ or tissue. It also deamidates specific signaling proteins. So now that we know the ins and outs of the Bordetella pertussis bacterium itself, it's time to dive into the disease that it causes called pertussis or whooping cough. Pertussis can cause serious illness, and it is most dangerous for babies, causing many of them to need care in a hospital. This is because many babies experience a symptom called apnea, which is a pause in their breathing pattern. It usually starts out to seem like a common cold and sometimes a mild cough. Early symptoms, which take place in the first one to two weeks, usually include a runny nose, minimal fever, mild cough, and apnea in babies. After these one to two weeks progress, the traditional symptoms of whooping cough start to appear. 
They can include fits of coughing, which are followed by a high-pitched whoop noise, and vomiting or exhaustion after fits of coughing. These fits can last for up to 10 weeks or even more. Some infants have no coughing symptoms and instead just stop breathing and turn blue, showing that, the, that this disease can be very dangerous. Here are some clips of actual whooping cough symptoms. Uh -oh. There we go. Could you hear the whoop? According to some statistics from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, of those babies who are treated in the hospital with pertussis, about one out of four get pneumonia, one out of a hundred will have convulsions, three out of five will experience apnea, one out of three hundred will have encephalopathy, and one out of a hundred will unfortunately die. Also, around 4% of adults will have rib fractures from severe coughing. These severe symptoms demonstrate how dangerous pertussis can truly be. The earlier you start treating pertussis, the better. There are several antimicrobial agents recommended for treatment, which include azithromycin, clarithromycin, and erythromycin. Fortunately, the DTaP vaccine, which stands for diphtheria tetanus pertussis, is very effective in preventing pertussis. Children should receive five doses of the vaccine. The first vaccine against pertussis was created in the 1930s by Lila Denmark, a pediatrician. Before the vaccine was readily accessible, around 200,000 children caught pertussis each year in the United States, and around 9,000 died from it. Now that the vaccine is readily available, the United States sees about 10,000 to 40,000 cases reported and up to 20 deaths each year. However, this vaccine does not protect forever. The protection decreases over time. This is a concept called waning immunity. This is the reason behind pertussis boosters, which are vaccines that are given over time in order to increase protection again. After doing my research, I have found that Bordetella pertussis has proven to be a very dangerous and even potentially fatal pathogen. Luckily, the medical and science fields have progressed greatly over the years. We have come such a long way from first discovering, isolating, and naming this microbe to now identifying the disease it causes, antimicrobials that are effective against it, and viruses that prevent pertussis.